Let's see the formation of interatrial septum. By the word meaning interatrial septum, that means the septum which is lying between the two atria, right and left atria. Before moving on directly into the topic, let's see the heart tube, how it looks like. We can see that at one end we have the arterial end that is called the bulbous cordis and the other end we have the venous end that is called the sinus venosus. In between you have the ventricle and atrium. So atrium is lying closer to the venous end and ventricle is lying closer to the arterial end. And we can see that there is a canal between the atrium, the primitive atrium and primitive ventricle that is called atrioventricular canal. And in the atrioventricular canal, there is a formation of two cushions from the anterior and posterior aspect. They are called AV cushions, atrioventricular cushions. So they develop from the anterior and posterior aspect of the atrioventricular canal and they fuse in the midline to form a septum. That septum is called septum intermedium. We can mark this as septum intermedium medium. So septum intermedium actually divides the entire atrioventricular canal into a tract on the right side and a tract on the left side. So this septum is called septum intermedium. So we are, now we can mark this as right atrium, this as left atrium, I mean the future right atrium, left atrium, the future right and future left ventricles. Now we can see that there is an opening for the sinus venosus. This is called sinoatrial orifice, sinoatrial orifice. So this orifice actually connects the sinus venosus with the atrium. And what is happening to the sinoatrial orifice? This is actually getting incorporated into the right atrium. This is actually the sinoatrial orifice which we see here. And that is actually getting incorporated into the right atrium. So we can see that there are two cusps or two valves for the sinoatrial orifice. This is called the right sinus valve and this is called the left sinus valve. And they are actually getting fused onto the roof of right atrium. So this part is called septum spurium. So this is called septum spurium. So the sinoatrial orifice is get, getting actually absorbed into the right atrium and it has got two valves, the right sinus valve and the left sinus valve and towards the roof they are getting fused and uh, forming septum spurium. Now we will move on to the formation of interatrial septum. The first formed septum is called septum primum. So this is actually the first formed septum, septum primum, the word meaning primum is the first formed septum. So the first formed septum will be actually formed from the roof of the atrium and it will gradually move downwards so that its aim is to meet the septum intermedium. The main purpose of the septum primum is the formation of interatrial septum. Even though it is trying to meet the septum intermedium, there should be a flow of blood from the right atrium to left atrium. That is what we have already seen in the fetal circulation. So the blood will be actually flowing from the right atrium to left atrium. So this orifice before the septum primum meets the septum intermedium. The first formed orifice is called ostium primum. So the first formed septum is called septum primum and before it meets the septum intermedium there is a gap in the lower aspect and that ostium is the first formed ostium hence you call it as ostium primum. Later as the septum primum is approaching the septum intermedium this ostium primum will be gone. We can see that the septum primum is gradually moving downward so that it is getting fused with the septum intermedium so that now the ostium primum is gone. But this condition cannot stay for a longer period. Why? Because the blood from the right atrium should definitely go to the left atrium. So there should be some way out. For that purpose, some of the cells in the upper part of the septum primum will undergo a programmed cell death or otherwise known as apoptosis so that there is another opening 
formed in the upper aspect for the flow of blood from the right atrium to left atrium. So this ostium is actually formed second. This ostium is now called as ostium secundum. This is the ostium which is formed after ostium primum. Hence it is called ostium secundum. So ostium secundum will allow the blood from the right atrium to flow into the left atrium. After the formation of ostium secundum, there is one more septum which is arising from the roof of atrium more towards the right side of the septum primum. So this is the second formed septum, isn't it? Because the first formed septum we have already named it as septum primum. So what do you call the secondly formed septum? It is very easy. We can name it as septum secundum. So this is called septum secundum and gradually it will start moving downwards but it's not like septum primum. It won't try to meet the septum intermedium. It will just grow downwards until it crosses the lower limit of ostium secundum. So it will just move downwards to a point where it will just cross the lower limit of ostium secundum. So this is the septum secundum. Once it crosses the lower limit of ostium secundum, now we are going to rename this ostium secundum as another opening. So this oblique opening which you get now by the formation of septum secundum is called foramen ovale. So foramen ovale is nothing but ostium secundum which is overlapped by the septum secundum and along with the septum secundum we can see that the septum spurium as well as the left venous valve will get fused. So the septum secundum will be fused with the septum spurium and the left venous valve. And when we compare the septum secundum with septum primum, septum secundum is somewhat rigid in structure and the septum primum will be acting like a flap valve. So what will happen after birth? After birth, there will be increase in pressure in the left atrium because the lungs will start functioning and the blood from the lungs through the uh, pulmonary veins will be reaching the left atrium and as a result, the pressure inside the left atrium will be increased. So when the pressure inside the left atrium is increased, what will happen? This uh, septum primum which is remaining there will act as a flap valve and it will actually fuse with the septum secundum and this foramen ovale will be closed. So when we see from the right side, we can see that this, there is a depression formed by the septum primum and that depression is called fossa ovalis. So the depression formed by the septum primum, when we look from the right side onto the intraatrial septum, that is called fossa ovalis and this is the lower free edge of septum secundum. So this will be seen as a ridge above the fossa ovalis, an arch shaped ridge that is called limbus fossa ovalis. So fossa ovalis is a depression formed by the septum primum and the free edge of the septum secundum, this free edge of the septum secundum which is actually forming a arch over the fossa ovalis that is called limbus fossa ovalis. And let's see some of the defects formed in the interatrial septum. As we have already mentioned, the first formed uh, ostium is called ostium primum, isn't it? As the septum primum is coming down, we can see that there is a defect in the lower aspect. This is called ostium primum. Sometimes this won't be fused. I mean the lower end of the septum primum won't get fused with the septum intermedium. So what will happen? This ostium will persist there. So that is called ostium primum defect of the interatrial septum. Sometimes what will happen is this will be fused and there will be an opening formed in the upper part of the septum primum and the septum secundum will be just formed. It won't be overlapping the ostium secundum. So you call this as ostium secundum defect 
of interatrial septum. So, the ostium secundum which was formed won't be completely overlapped by the septum secundum. Such condition is called ostium secundum defect. Sometimes what will happen is the septum secundum will be overlapping the ostium secundum but after birth even though you get an increased pressure inside the left atrium this septum primum won't be getting fused with the septum secundum. So the foramen ovale will remain patent even after birth permitting the blood from the right atrium to travel into the left atrium. That condition is called patent foramen ovale. Sometimes what happens is there will be approximation of the septum primum with the septum secundum but there won't be fusion. So uh, practically speaking there is no blood flow through this gap but if you pass a prop between these two you can easily pass that prop that is called prop patency of foramen ovale. So prop patency of foramen ovale is usually seen but it's not that dangerous. Why? Because it won't allow blood from the right atrium to left atrium. But patent foramen ovale means the septum primum which is actually acting as a flap valve won't be getting approximated with septum secundum. So that the connection between the right atrium and left atrium persists and that is called patent foramen ovale. So the major three defects which can happen for the interatrial septum are ostium primum defect where you won't, you won't get the septum primum approximating with the septum intermedium, ostium secundum defect where you won't get the septum secundum overlapping the ostium secundum and patent foramen ovale where you won't get the septum primum fusing with the septum secundum after birth. So interatrial septum is actually formed from septum primum and septum secundum along with septum secundum you also get the fusion of septum sperium and left sinus valve of the sinoatrial orifice and lower part you can see the endocardial cushion that is the atrioventricular cushion which is actually forming the septum intermedium and this septum intermedium will be dividing the entire atrioventricular canal into right and left track that's all about the formation of interatrial septum